Hello, I'm Liam Grange. Welcome back for more Taekwondo philosophy. Uh, last time we were talking about the trigrams and how they may or may not relate to our practice. Uh, this time we're going to ask a more fundamental question. What are they? Where do they come from and what do they mean? Well, one way to answer this would be to say that they were seen in a vision by a half-man, half-snake who married his own twin sister and created the first humans and then taught them how to fish and farm and write. And he saw these symbols in a vision on the back of a tortoise or possibly a horse dragon. I'm not quite sure what a horse dragon is, but... So, Fusi... Uh, saw these as fundamental patterns in nature um, and he he used them to to understand the world and he taught them to the very first humans. Futsi was one of these kind of uh, culture heroes who established Chinese culture. Uh, so it's, it's a mythological origin and then the, one of the next important people in, in the development of this system is a chap called King Wen. And he is actually his son, really, but he supposedly is the founder of the Zhou Dynasty. And the Zhou Dynasty, very ancient dynasty, um, established the, the norms in Chinese society for ancestor worship and... Uh, Therefore, as the founder of this dynasty, is kind of considered one of the founders of, of Chinese culture. He's, he's one of the first, probably the first, um, kind of historical figure, um, as opposed to mythological figure in, in the story of the Chinese people. One of the things that's attributed to him is taking these symbols, which uh, Futsi, our, our snake god, had had seen on the back of a tortoise and organizing them into the the jo e the the changes of the jo e meaning uh change and this is the uh the predecessor to the eating the the book of changes uh as it as it became one of the Confucian classics, one of these five books that's fundamental to um, to Chinese literary thought, to to the exams for becoming uh, a Mandarin. So the Zhou Dynasty uh, is associated with this this creation of of a uh, of a new form of divination. Uh, what is divination? It's uh, a way of telling the for fortunes, a way of of telling the future. Um, it's more, perhaps would be better to think of it, especially in this context, as a way of trying to understand the underlying patterns and forces at play within any given situation. Um, and And that's really what we should think about is is archetypal patterns of of change um, the Shang dynasty which is a dynasty prior to the Zhou dynasty um, 3,500 years ago to 3,000 years ago roughly speaking is is well known for its oracle bones these are show the earliest example of the Chinese script and one of the earliest examples of, of writing in the history of the planet. Um, what they did was they took the scapula, the shoulder blades of oxen, they took the shells, the bottom and the top shell of uh, large tortoises, they cleaned all the meat off them, they drilled lots of holes in them and they wrote their questions in this early form of the Chinese script then they would heat up the holes that they had drilled and this would lead to the bone or the shell cracking. And where it cracked, the diviner would interpret, uh, would read the answers to the questions. Questions like, 
should the prince go hunting on such a day? Um, when is the correct time for uh, paying respects to this ancestor or that deity? Um, should I make peace with my cousin? Or should I ride an army to his village and slaughter everyone? Uh, these these types of questions. Um, the so so that's pyromancy was uh, the bone method. The the method that came to replace that with the Zhou Dynasty and the kind of more civilized um, the beginnings of of Chinese civilization, if you like. Uh, is a form of cleromancy, which is uh, randomly generating numbers in order to, to get your answer to your question. And in this case, it was taking yarrow stalks and dividing them uh, in a very complicated method. Later on, it became throwing coins. And this would generate numbers. And there are four possible numbers that you could get, a six, a seven, an eight, or a nine. Um, and this would lead to either yin or yang, and it would be new yin or old yin, new yang or old yang. The idea being that yin at, moves towards yang and at its completion becomes yang, whereas yang is moving towards yin and at its completion becomes yin. Um, so an old yang line would become a new yin line and vice versa so what what we see is is the ideas that we have in the tai chi 2 the tai chi diagram the what we call in the west the tai chi diagram with the the two halves seeming to revolve around each other and the genesis of each being seen in in the center of its opposite but this is a long time, centuries before that diagram actually uh, is is first drawn that we know of. Um, the Tai Chi Tu uh, in Korean is called the uh, Tai Chi is called Taeguk, and Taeguki is the name for that symbol, and is more commonly the name of the national flag of the Republic of Korea. So you'll have seen that in your in your dojang, almost certainly. Um, so it's a the I Ching is a book with 64 of these diagrams so we have these are the trigrams and if you put one on top of another you have hexagram there are eight of these eight times eight is 64 and that's our all possible combinations of these yin and yang lines and you divine and you get one of these hexagrams and then you all of the old lines would flip to their opposite and then you get another hexagram. So you'd always inherent in this idea is this constant change. So this this is coming about in the in the Zhou dynasty and in the Warring States period, uh, which is a period of incredible philosophical innovation. You know, this is when we have Confucius, Mencius, um, this is when we have the, the early texts of uh, Taoism being written, the Lao Tzu, the Shuang Tzu, uh, these, these texts are really sort of fundamental to Chinese thought. At this time, the I Ching starts to become not just a way of answering questions, but a way of thinking about the world. Okay, so we have in the I Ching the concepts of yin and yang, uh, yang being the sunny side of the mountain, yin being the shady side of the mountain. So sunny and shady, opposite sides of the same thing. We have this idea of relational opposites, something, uh, you know, a, a whole set of kind of dialectics which organize the world sunny and shady up down male female hard soft all all of these of course only exist in relation to its opposite so is reliant upon its opposite and this idea of constant change dynamic uh, constantly becoming one thing becoming something else as you know really important foundational 
ideas. So this book uh, starts off as a way of essentially knowing if it's a good time to undertake a certain uh, mission and becomes um, the source of uh, yin and yang ideas which permeate martial arts, which permeate uh, medicine, which permeates uh, geomancy, uh, like feng shui, these types of ideas, and becomes foundational to uh, the emerging Taoist schools of thought and Confucian schools of thought. Um, and so it's a really, really important uh, text in, in the history of, of Chinese thought. Um, I think one of one of the things, one of the, a parting idea, if you like, is these symbols. I think they they're so powerful, and they they can be uh, such magical symbols. Um, and I mean, literally used for magic, because they can be a way of organizing in lots of different ways simultaneously. So. This symbol can symbolise heaven, but it can also symbolise father, it can symbolise hardness. So you get a, a range of different concepts uh, associated with it, and those concepts exist in relation to other concepts. So there's no kind of, um, they don't exist in and of themselves, they're, they're relational they rely upon a structure of of difference, of, of, of opposites, and it's a way of ordering the the known world according to a set of correlations. One thing, one idea may correlate to another, so it allows people to form correlative cosmologies, ways of understanding the world where, for instance, North is associated with cold and it will be associated with midnight and will be associated with winter whereas south is warm associated with midday associated with summer so you build up these layers of correlation and the this method of thinking um, allows for a huge creativity and a huge amount of play within the structure of meaning. Um, I'll leave it there. Cheers.